Okay, cool. And about how long did you do customer success? I did that from August to March of this year. All right. Now, let's really get into the fun stuff, the meat and potatoes. So now you are a solutions architect. Yes. How is that transition working with, and I'm going to presume you work with Azure a lot? Yes. How was that? Were you familiar with Azure at all before you started this position? Yes and no. Yes and no. Not enough to really navigate, but I could, I know, I knew what Azure was, but Azure is so much. There's so many different layers to Azure. Um, the, the difference between the two roles, customer success for me was super not technical. CSA, Cloud, Cloud Solution Architect, is a super technical role. So I had some upskilling to do. I had to learn Azure. It's been a lot of one-on-ones. It's been a lot of asking questions, um, a lot of exam and certification taken. Did they give you a lateral raise from going from customer success to Cloud Solutions Architect, or did you get uh, a good bump? No, but I'm going to tell you why. Because when I started, the roles that started in my cohort, CSA was one of those roles. Okay. So it was... It's one of those like yeah. rotational things? It's not rotational, though. It was a, a voluntold situation. Like, got you. you're moving. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Got you, got you. So, well, then I guess, so it didn't matter. So was the increase from the business manager to customer success was that much of an increase absolutely okay yes well what do we have because you know earlier we were it talking was about more, moving to it, richardson it that was one. about almost fifteen thousand more okay yep did you get any and i'm, I'm asking these things too because these are some questions i know people ask sometimes or on the internet with your role were you able to get any equity yep. in the company yep and were you able to get uh, a sign-on Yes. Okay. Did you have somebody help you negotiate that or you just actually? I did. And shout out to y'all. Shout out to my mentor. And then this other gentleman who I know, I reached out to them immediately because I feel like I have certain people that I can talk money with. And you want to talk money with people who have experience with money and experience with negotiating. Um, So she actually reached out to someone that she knows who's a recruiter at Meta, I think. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, tell her to negotiate, tell her to negotiate. And it paid off. Yeah, man. Yeah. I think this last position was probably like the best negotiating I did. I was able to get a sign on and a cut buy out because <laughs> I knew they weren't going to put me at the top of the range. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I tell my clients sometimes, I say, well, we can work on something. They might not want to put you at the top of the range, but they may be able to give you a sign on and make the, the TC worth it, at least for the first year. And then you can go on from there. So that's cool. That's, that's Speaking of sign on. I had to pay my sign on back when I left AT&T, but I already knew I was leaving. So that's something else to consider. Yeah. If you're moving within that time frame, because they all pretty much have a time frame, just be mindful of yeah, that. I think it's about like a year. Yep. That's what I So I was like, you can, so you can, maybe can't get a sign on, but you could negotiate them paying that back for you as well. Yep. So I know you said you kind of was like technical. What is a, a cloud solutions architect? It depends. I know that that is a really rough answer, but it really depends. At Microsoft, we have different flavors. Right. That's what I'm saying. Because I tell people sometimes, sometimes a cloud solutions architect may not be as, it's technical, but sometimes not super technical. Exactly. But you can you can start off on a level zero and you can go all the way to a 10 in mm-hmm. terms of your, your technical capabilities. Um it, it we have different flavors at, at Microsoft. So my my flavor is security, and within security, Office three sixty five security, Sentinel, and um, Zero Trust. Those are those are my babies. Those are money makers right there. Let's do a typical day of a solutions architect when you go into the urban office. Okay. Um. So a tip a day in the life. So. I don't go into office to work with customers because I need my monitors and I have like my screen. I need my setup. How many you got? I only have two plus my laptop now, but I really need a third. How big are they? 22. I would say. And but my desk is only 38 inches. So yeah, it's like, it's the perfect size desk, but I, I finally upgraded my life and I, I got my monitors like they are in the office. Oh, so you the got little, like a monster arm? Yep, yep. I was going to say, you probably see so I got two desks. My desk, I shoot content on. I have a 27-inch monitor. 
And then my other desk that I do a lot of work from and I work from and that's the standing desk, I have, I think a 134 inch on there. That's more than enough. For me. Yeah. Because I have now my new gaming set up on that one. That's also my lab device and, and everything now. And then also I just have it plugged into my work, uh, well, my docking station for my work laptop. So whenever I want to switch back and forth, that's what I do. I think, I think it's, I think it's big enough. But I think 27 is probably like the, the good. So if you get like 227 inches, and then you get a uh, get like an L-shaped desk or something like that. I think you'd be in there. You can multitask like that. Yeah. But I'll let you continue with your day in the life. 